Hello, welcome to Learn and Flutter. And today we're going to still be talking about navigation, but we're going to be talking about how to pass data from one screen to another. So just to make it clear what we're doing is imagine that how I have screen one here and I have a second screen. And what I want to do is navigate from screen one to screen two. And maybe of course I'll want to navigate back, but all I'm looking at today is how in that forward navigation, if I have some data on screen one, right, that the user probably entered a form or in our example, we're going to have a list and they're going to be able to select an item on that list. And we want to navigate to another screen and have the data move from screen one to screen two. And of course we can accomplish this with like global variables in our program, but that is not the point we do not want to do. We want to minimize using globals and we just want to make sure that we have data and it's shared in a place and with the parts of the application that actually need it. Okay. And so that is the goals for today's exercise. Now the documentation for everything that I'm going to be doing, and I'm essentially using the example from the um, Flutter documentation here. And if you go to navigation, which is where we've been working, we did how to navigate um, between screens, how to do name routes. And today we're doing sending data to a new screen. The only difference between their example and mine is I think my example is a little bit nicer because um, instead of just doing a simple to-do list, I literally adopt this. I'm going to do a shopping list item. I'm going to show you how to generate some sample data. Literally, it's the exact same thing. So I don't want to make it seem like if I did anything significantly different. But um, I'm going to walk you through it anyway, and I'll show you how to create some data. Now, a few things. Um, I apologize in advance for the street noise. You might hear some cars going back and forth. I'm recording in a room that is right next to a road and really I can't do anything about it. Before we jump into the video though, please do me a favor, hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. And of course, if you really feeling generous, which I hope you are, um, definitely leave a comment. Let me know that oh, you're there, you're engaging in the material. All right, so let's jump into it. Now, here I am on my command line, and as you can see, this is our previous code, and I have already upgraded my Flutter, which I tell you that you should do, or at least I recommend that you should do. And so what I'll do is create a eight example, and then we'll change into that directory, and I start my Visual Studio code. So here's Visual Studio code, and as usual, we'll start with main um, in the lib directory. We'll start in the lib directory. But before we get started with the actual um, Flutter code, what I'd like to do is create um, a class to represent the items that I'm going to have in my list. So here's that application, and we're going to pretend that we have some store, and there's some items in our, in our store that we have for sale or whatever. And so we can show the total number of items, and if you want how many are in stock, that's optional. But I just wanted to show it so you can have different things on the screen. And so a user is going to be able to scroll through our score store. And I'm not saying this is the best way to present this. This is just an example. And so if you click on an item, you go to another screen with some more details about that item. You can imagine here we can have things about some images that you're not going to be able to display here. Maybe you can just have like a small image. But if a user clicks for detail, you can have many more images that you can show for that item. Um, if they like something, they can potentially buy it. Again, um, I don't actually do anything with that, but that's an example to show you that how you can add it then to their cart. And maybe you have a cart item here with a um, number to show them how many things are in the cart, that sort of thing. So from here, you can really go a number of places. Okay, so let's go get some data to build out our, um, our list. And so what I'm going to do is come back here to the code and I'm going to start by adding a class. Now I'm going to shoot for this video to be about 20 minutes. So let's see how I do. Okay. Um, so let's call this item that dart and then we're going to say class item and then we're going to put in some properties. So we say final int ID, for example, we need um, the, the name of the item that we're going to set out. And of course, you know, um, price. We want to be able to know if it's in stock or not. 
and finally we might need some uh, description now there are a bunch of other things that you can do here finally we're going to do a constructor and then we're going to make um, the description optional all right so this looks good enough to me um, the next thing I want to do is have a class that, or at least just a function that I'm going to pretend is my database where I can get information so I can get all my items. So I'll call this data.dar. And this is going to be very, very simple. Um, so we're going to have some variable that we can call items, and it's going to be a list of items. And then we'll have a function called get items that simply returns um, our items. That's it. And so now the only thing we need to work on is our items. Now for this, we're going to populate a list of items. So we know what that looks like. It's going to look something like this and we'll have comma and then we'll have another item and so on and so on so i'm going to sort of cheat a little bit and this is where i'm going to show you where to get some data and so i'll go back to my web browser and i'll go to a site called makaro so m-o-c-k-a-r-o-o dot com and here they already have some things filled in so let me zoom in a little bit um, pretty small okay this is much better and so for us, we want name and we can leave this as row number and our name, we wanna look for stuff that look like grocery item, for example. And so let's choose grocery. And then we want um, price. And this is going to be money, right? Like this. And um, so for money um, between, we don't want things that are zero dollars. So let's say from a dollar to about $15 if you like. And uh, we'll use US currency, but you're free to pick whatever they offer there. And then instead of email, we'll say in stock. And we need this to be a Boolean value. And so true or false, and it's gonna give us some random thing and we can say how many percentage of it we want to be blank we don't want any to be blank and then we can of course do um, like description and for description we can look for description and they don't have description for products but we'll just pick any one of these random thing here long description again this is just for you know simulation and testing so we can remove that and then we don't need a thousand i would say um maybe 50 or something um but for this example, I'll go with 20, but you can choose whatever you like here. They go, allow you to go up to 1,000, and you can do preview. And then there's our data, and it looks pretty good to me. And then I will go to a comma separated value, and I'll copy from line one. And I'll just copy that to the clipboard, and close this, I don't need this anymore, I'll come back here. And if I paste this in here, now I have what looked like a royal mess, so let me, want to manipulate this data for a little bit um, so there we go and so I'll speed up this part I'll show you the first part of the manipulation I'll hold on the alt shift key on my Mac keyboard and I'll just draw a line straight down like this and I'll say item and I'll do open parentheses and then I'll go to the end of each line and I'll put the close parentheses right so um, I'll show you a first few. I'm again along the, the Alt key and I'll just click on each line. And you gotta be careful of this because if you mess it up, you have to start over. But in the end, I'm able to put a comma uh, cursor at the end of each line and then I can type close parentheses comma. So that gives me the basic setup for an item. But of course, I also need to enclose these a string so I'm gonna go ahead and do that too and now I have all, all those in close I can type single quote and their strings 
Now the only thing I have to get rid of now is this. I select the dollar, do command D, 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 to select all those with dollar signs because, well, we can't save them like that. And I do that, and now if I save everything, it should be fine. I shouldn't have any errors. I see some errors, so what is it complaining about? Um, let's see. Okay, too many positional parameters. Oh, the description. Ah. So for our description, uh, let's go back to code then and just make our description a part of our constructor. Yep, let's go back here and they should all go away. Oh, I missed a few. Pull on my LTD key again, save it, and there we go. So those are my items. Um, took me a little bit of time to do it. So I think we're probably a good five minutes into this video if I had to guess. So we should totally get back and try to get on track. So now that I have some data, what do I want to do? So last time we were looking at using name routes. So I'm going to remove using name routes. And instead, what I'm going to do is go back to home and I'll say I have a home page widget here. Um, and that's because I'm not going to use name routing for this one. And I'll say instead of saying old page, I'm going to say this is our shop. And then I want to have a list of items that I'm going to have for sale. So um, that seemed like we should, okay, get rid of the, 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 the raise button. We don't want to use that for navigation. So we have that. Now we should start putting in some things. So the first thing we want is probably a summary or like item summary, for example. And item summary, we're going to pass in the set of items that we have. And we haven't written that class yet, but we can certainly get the list of items. Um, here, we can do a final um, items equals to get items. And remember, this is coming from our pretend database. And so now we have the set of items we can pass to um, our item summary class. And then we can do stateful widget um, stateless widget and we do that and we call it item summary and then we have here for example final and it's going to be items and then we have a constructor and so now that's that and then what we should do then, why is this complaining? We didn't, we didn't pull it in. So let's do this, import item.dart. Okay, there we go. And then um, for our item summary class, this is fairly easy. We have a container here. What we can do is say that our, we have a row to show our summary. So we have a row. And we have, um, let's say text total, and let's do that. We save it, and we should probably just keep track of how our application is coming along. So let's go back to that. So let's run our application first of all. We need to do that. So while that's starting up, let's continue. So we want to show the total in a row, and we also want to show. Um, well, let's do major axis alignment um, to, to space around. So we do major axis alignment and space around, for example. And then we also want to have another text box showing how many items are in stock. So maybe we can have a variable called um, count in stock or something like that. And we can do this. And so how do we compute um, number of items in stock? Well, pretty easy actually. We can say varier count item count in stock is equals to underscore items that fold. And so the fold function is pretty simple. I probably look a little bit complicated, but all it does is it takes this initial value and 
it, first of all, it calls a um, callback with your previous value and the current element value. And it uses the initial value on the very first call as the previous value. And then whatever you return on subsequent call becomes the previous value and the current element value. So if that doesn't make sense, let me show you um, a little markdown that I did to illustrate this idea. And so maybe we zoom in. So here's what that might look like. Oh, that's the markdown text, but um, let's say we have a list of numbers and here is nums with, you know, five numbers in it. And what we can do is say, we want to sum this and call num that folds. And we want to say our initial value is zero. So you can think of that initial value as the value for some previous computation that you did before you call fold. That's one way of thinking of it. And so if my callback function takes, must take two parameters, the previous value and the current value, and then do some computation and return a new value. Um, now, if this fat arrow way of looking at the function, you know, this anonymous, anonymous function is too much for you, then just break it out into an actual uh, function with parentheses. It's still an anonymous function, but it has parentheses. And so what we're going to do is on the very first call, we're going to give it the initial value we passed in, which is zero. And it's going to use the very first element from that um, list, which is going to be five in this case. And we do a simple computation of, you know, the previous value and the current value, let, let's say addition, and we return five. Because we return five, when it goes to call us for the second value in our list, which is three, it will use our previous computation on that second iteration. So this is iteration number two. It's going to use our previous value, which is five, and our current value, which is three. And then we're going to do a computation. We'll return. And as you can see, um, it's going to literally call us each for each value in our list, but using the previous value we computed. And so the end result now is that we, if we sum these, we get 24. And that's how you can use fold to sort of reduce a list into one value. So that is what we're use, going to use here. Pretty much the exact same thing. Um, and so we're going to say fold zero, oh, wrong place. I'm going to say fold zero. And let's call this previous value and then current element value or item rather, this is gonna be an item. And what we wanna return is a test to see if the current thing is in stock, stock or not. And so if the item is in stock, we return true. So we can say item and do the tertiary operator. The item is in stock, add one. If, if it's not in stock, just return the previous value, which means don't do any computation. And this is in stock. And so I'm gonna clean up and restart this because it's possible that I confuse Flutter. Yep, and there we go, seven items in stock. And if you don't like how many items are in stock, just you know go through and change a few more of them to true. And I think I changed about four of them just now. Um, that should give us a little bit more data. And so, true. All right, so I think that's enough. We can close this. We never need this again. We don't need this again, so we can focus on this. Um, so it's saying avoid using parentheses if you don't have any complex um, thing, essentially. It's just a simple variable, so that's that. And so this should update pretty soon. And so, okay, so we have that in place. I'm gonna restart it again because I think, um, yep, so we got 15 and stuff, great. So the only other thing we need now is we have our summary. And so we actually need to display our, our list of items in our store. So what we can do is say we can create a inventory class, maybe we call it stateless widget and let's call it inventory and this is what's going to actually display the list of items that we have in our store so inventory we can pass in the list of items just as before since we have it already and so there we go and here 
we do the same thing as before. So that should compile and run successfully, no errors. No, we just have to return a list. And so to create a list is very easy in Flutter. We haven't covered it before, but we simply use the list view builder. And essentially what that looks like, you can pass in how many items you want to build, it are, how many items are in your list. So the list builder is going to know how many times to call you to create a tile in that list or a row. So that's going to be for us. That's pretty easy. And then notice the item builder is how to build each individual item. And there's just a build context function. And it takes the index. I mean, I don't really have to remove any of this, but I'll just make it a little bit short so it's easier to see. And we need to return a list tile. So this is going to be our list style and list style has a title. And so there we go. Um, maybe I should just hit restart here, return. Let's do title for now. If you do this, um, you're going to see some error um, about has size and list view and all this other stuff. So what we want to be able to do is now say it all we should have, um, expand our child in this row so we scroll back up and so we say wrap this in an expand widget and so if we save this now you see our list is going to show up all right so let's clear the screen and then we scroll back down and so here's our list tile okay here and so you can see the name of our item now we have a couple of things. We can do a leader, which is a trailer, um, which can put text after um, the title, or we can do subtitle. And so whatever you want to put in the subtitle or the trailer is up to you. But for me, I'm going to do subtitle and I'll put um, price. Let's do item that price. And so what we can do is um, once we enter, we're called, here in this builder, we actually know so final item, you know, item is equals to items, items of IDX. So we know the item that we're going to be working with. So we can just simply use that. Um, so we can actually simplify this and be item that name. And similarly here, we can do that. Okay, so we have our item laid out. And the final thing we can do, like I said, we can do a trailer or trailing. And now we have a list that scrolls on the, the stationary stuff. Or we could, of course, make the font larger, but it doesn't do anything. Like we can't click it and go anywhere. So what we need now is a screen that is going to be our um, details, item details screen. Let's come back down here and we can get rid of page two and we'll just convert page one actually into our item details. And, and let's put this as item and item name up here, for example. We'll fix this later. So now that we have an item details screen place order, now all we have to do is worry about what happens when someone click on this. So we want to do in navigation when someone clicks on this. So let's put that in there. And so the final thing that we're going to have here for our tile is to navigate when someone clicks on it. So there's an on tap. If you remember, when we want to do navigation, we do navigation that push and we call the push function and there's a context. And the thing we have to call is a material page route. And with a material page route, we pass that as a parameter and simply say if we want to call our item details. And there we go, item details. Now, this will result in us navigating to our item page. Of course, we, we already had the code in that page to navigate backwards, but notice we're not using our item names and stuff. That's because we don't have the information on this page and we can certainly pass it here as a parameter, right? We have the item here. We don't want to do that. Instead, we want to put it somewhere so that when we get to that page, we can find it. And that somewhere is in the material page route. In addition to having the builder, 
we also have a property called settings and there it is and this is road settings and we can use this and that road setting object is going to contain as its argument or item so now when we go over to our item details page what we can do then is and this is basically saying look up in our current context that road setting and then get the setting and the argument value and there we go this is it now that we have this we can say our route the screen's title is item that name and then we can choose to put the name here if we like okay so what we say oh let's restart because it's possible that our code is yep there we go let's click it and notice there we go we can go back red tie and there we go and so now on this page we can choose how we want to display it so i'll just paste in some code so that um we don't actually spend the time looking at me just typing up some code and so if you look at this code all it is is a column and i have some text widget showing the name of the object the price and then in a row widget i have button for back and if you want to buy it for example um, we can also put in the description if we like Oh, and of course, we'll have to find ways of formatting this so that it makes sense. But now, um, as you can see, we have all the information we need now on our details page. We can go back, we can pick something, we can choose to buy it. Of course, we don't do anything other than navigate backwards. But this is an example of where you can call out a code to add it to the shopping cart or something. Okay, um, that's it. I hope you learned something. Uh, it's a pretty simple example, but I thought it was really cool being able to get some more slightly realistic data, even though the description is off, <laughs> but at least you can see how you can extend this very, very easy to do a very simple application. You can get at some um, images and so on. And I covered in previous video how to display images in Flutter. At this point in the video, if you haven't hit the like button yet, please hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed, do subscribe, hit the notification bell so you're gonna be notified when I post videos. Take care, have a great day, stay safe.